Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another stream. Sorry about the extra five minutes there, just been trying to get my boy asleep. Is uh, not just into the time zone by the seems of it. Yeah, because we changed that on Sunday. Um, so you might hear him. He's just, yeah, trying to get him to uh, soothe himself to sleep now. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so today, oh, last stream, what do we do? Uh, we kind of got um, LOD 0 and 1 rendering again. Because um, we got a nice debug. So this debug sh is, uh, shape is a screen space axis to the line bounding box around one cluster in LOD 1. So a cluster is a 4x4x4 four by four by four set of spheres. So what we're seeing is, is a 2x2x2 two by two by two set of clusters, which are 4x4x4 four by four by four each. Um, so what I'm hoping, on, uh, hoping to do this stream is to um, make sure that the spheres that should be here actually get shown. Because right now I'm just saying, hey, all the spheres exist. And I kind of hard-coded that. So that's what I want to work on today and hopefully get a bit further than that as well um so um i want to start by fixing a sync code problem there is a um the um the debug draw stuff, I realized, or the draw 3D, draw 2D stuff, uh, I didn't actually properly handle the sync code, which I've just realized. So realistically, these things should have a pipeline barrier down uh, on the first shader they used, and then on the last shader when they're rendered, they'll have a pipeline barrier say they're read, read from. Uh, so I think I need to add something to my GPU abstraction which is going to be um basically saying like hey always synchronize this resource or something um Yeah, I think, yeah, so I think the way we probably want to make it is saying, um, always sync this resource, um, so we'll pass that in when we sort of initialize the back end or the, um, the GPU subsystem, if you will. And then I think we want to hold an array, so here's the internals. Uh, we'll probably have probably just have an array of U32. Um which will have yeah, so these will like always sync resources. So the API the way it'll work is we'll just say something like when you initialize well yeah, I guess you can just say something like um, the capacity. We'll just say, hey, always sync resource. You're passing a GP resource ID and a kind of like what is the access mode? Access mode, is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So access mode being one of these four, right? Read, read, write, sorry, read, write, and if you want it to be uh, an overlap as well. So you have one of these four, read only, read write, uh, write only or write only an overlap. Um, Maybe you want to read right and overlap as well. So 
So we'll store those in the high bits. That way we're not making another type. Should be quite easy. So we'll just um so the way I'm thinking about doing it is simply um Yes yeah, so the problem is any shader um is globally accessible to draw a debug shape from now. And it's globally accessible to print as well. But the print one is already handled. Um but the because that's built into this GPU subsystem, the printing. But the shapes are not. Um, the debug drawing shape arrays are not. Nowadays. Oh, it's fine. He's just near the top of the bed. But he's quiet, so he's nearly gonna go to sleep. Um, right, okay, so G GPU. Um uh always sync resources, and then we're gonna push onto that this sort of like we're gonna pack this together. Hey there, Kat uh Katamoy. How's it going? Uh, welcome, welcome. What C do you use? I'm thinking of getting into C. Drop in C++. Alright, just use C11. Uh, a few, like, five years ago, maybe, C99. But C11 is alright now. Um, it's supporting most, most compilers, and um, the good thing about, so C99 was probably the last great release. C11 has some it has atomics, um, which are sort of built in, so you don't have to do a wrapper around GCC and uh, and um, the MSVC intrinsics or whatever. And maybe, or the other way, I guess, is doing it inline assembly or whatever, um, and doing it manually. So atomics come built in now, which is great, uh, and also. You can have unions, which can be unnamed, which is really nice. So I use unions all over the place. So this is possible in C11, where you have this unnamed, and you can have. So I can just say, hey, copy entry dot buffer, copy entry dot texture, and it refers to these two overlapping regions of memory. So that's really nice. You can uh, do this basically in C11, um, and this static assert. Like a st an actual proper static assert, not like a hacky one that you'd do. Um, but yeah, so you just just use C11. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. So we'll uh, wedge. or we'll wedge some of the. Oh wait a minute. We can't wedge them because. Uh. Yeah, maybe we can't. Ah, because uh, this is a, this is a, like a handle type, and it's already got some things in the high bits. It's got um, it's got like a generation counter in the high bits. So actually, I'd have to just get the raw index part and reconstruct it. Uh, or I could just use an extra. Hmm. I can always just get the raw index part and we get it. Mm. Let's just um let's just do this. Uh resource And access mode. <laughs> okay. Um, wait. Yeah, what should we call this strut? 
is another thing. Um, resource access, I guess I'll call it. Okay. So we need to create ourselves a core stack, core define stack. Yep, of that type. So that declares a type safe version of uh, one of these core stacks. So we can now do this. Basically, templates in C, right? Just manual, manually done, but but less sort of code gen. Nice code gen, more void pointer stuff underneath, just type safe wrappers. Um, right. Um, yeah, so we're pushing on. Uh, GPU resource access. We'll call it an access, and then we'll just simply um, cool access um, res ID. Oh, did I do that? I did. ID equals res ID, and then access access mode. Or mode equals access mode. There we go. So now I've got this array of like things to always synchronize on. When we do a dispatch, now we simply just um, somewhere around here. Yeah, we do a four. Uh, we need to over on the, dis the dispatch and indirects as well. Uh, Hey there, Captain Chica. How you been? How's it going? Um, resource access access equals um, dot data index. Boom. Now we just manually call the sync function in here. So sync command sync resource access resource and then access mode so now this is gonna do the standard synchronization code uh, we we usually say sync resource and you say this resource on it to be read write um, and it does it just before the dispatch happens right so um, what I would like to do now is Okay, I need to initialize this array. That's one thing I didn't do. So GPU initialize. Um, a little bit like, oh, here. Uh, with a static allocator, spec, always sync resources capacity. And it'll push, 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 and wonderful. So we need to push our things on. <coughs> so these are the two things I want to synchronize on. These can be used from any shader they're global um so what i would like to do is say gpu always sync this thing as um yeah i wonder how much of a problem this would be With the one that says read only. Anyway, GPU access mode, uh, read write no overlap. So what this will do is it will promise that, uh, let me do a bit of a draw, uh, drawing to explain what this means. Find an an old gem from university. Libbase C and libbase CXX. What is that? 
How do you navigate different files in buffers in Vim? In, in Vim? Well, I open up these tabs a lot, and then I just sort of switch between them. I basically have one file per subsystem, so I don't really, I just have all my code in a single file for that subsystem, and just you know they usually get quite big. These is about one thousand five hundred lines. At the moment, this is just all the graphics. Um, and then I just open up new tabs and close them. Um, I was using TJ's telescope, but then I did something and it broke it. And that's another way to get around. Um, but yeah, that's typically what I do. Or it will, or I'll go to definition and then I'll jump back. Um, so this will change my tab to a different file and I'll just jump back to the previous buffer. That's typically how I work at the moment. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's probably a good suggestion as well, F Z, yeah. F Z F, yeah. Like a fuzzy finder. Hey there, VMT. Yeah, this ain't too big of a project, so it's quite easy to navigate, but not much. Those are two duct type, duct tape libs that push me through uni days, restraining me from reimplanting stuff that are now in the C++ standard. Oh. I've never seen these things. Oh, no, base 64 in that. So I just encode stuff for you. Neat. Yeah. Bad. Yeah, to, yeah, I think, I think, I think Probably nowadays you can hand roll those right those right. But yeah, I guess when you start in uni, definitely handy to have stuff like that. Um yes, yeah, so I wanted to draw what is, what is, what does this read write know that mean? Well so you dispatch a compute shader, right? Then you just want to dispatch another compute shader. Well it turns out this compute shader writes to this resource here. Right, uh, this buffer, and this one reads from it. Okay, so what do we need here? What we need here is a pipeline barrier. Right, so we need a hard barrier which basically gets in the way and says, No, this thing has to finish before this one can start. And you put those in in, in Vulkan pipeline barriers. So, we, what we have is a little abstraction where basically if you have a read write between like before we before we dispatch this compute shader we'll be like oh yeah we write to this guy so we'll go rw this guy right and then this one will be like before i will um so we have some resource tracking where it will mark this buffer and say hey this thing has been previously was written to uh, and then this one, when we go to dispatch this one, we'll go, okay, before we're going to dispatch you, we're, we're going to say, we're going to say, hey, we uh, read only from this buffer. So because we've tried to read and this thing was written to before, we insert a buffer before it. It's that simple. It's a very simple thing. But there's a case where sometimes you have a buffer and you want to open it as read write. So hey, I read write at this guy. We read write. But so we both read write from this buffer. But what we but this buffer is just a collection of bytes. Right? It's a nice long, lovely array of bytes. But this part of it only write writes to this. And then this dispatch writes to this part afterwards. So they don't actually overlap. So you're not going to get any, um, 
uh, read write. Um, <clears throat> you're not going to see um, any reads happening while writes are going into the buffer, basically. So you're going to promise you're going to write, you're not going to write the same parts. So when we do our draw debug drawing buffers, when we say, hey, draw a bounding box for us or draw a sphere or a vector, that is just appending to a buffer. So what we need, to, so what we have a little special mode called read, write, no overlap. And this one basically promises that, so long as this one says read, write, no overlap, and the one afterwards also says read, write, no overlap, right? There will not be a barrier that gets placed down between these two because they promise they write to the same buffer but they don't overlap, right? But later, if this one says, hey, I'm going to read, write, no overlap, and this one just says, hey, I'm going to read, then they don't promise they will no overlap because this one says, I'm just going to read. So then that is a read, write dependency. And so then we will we'll put a barrier here. So this is the final, this will be the final dispatch as an example, where it's going to take that array of, of debug drawings, and then it's going to uh, render them to the screen. It's going to need the whole buffer, isn't it? So yeah, all of our shaders are going to do this no overlap thing by default. Uh, but we, when we do that at the end, um, when we do those lovely, lovely shaders, which do the, this one, we want to say, hey, read only for me, please, on draw, 3D buffer, read only on draw, 2D buffer. Now we've got to check the sync code to make sure this works uh, as intended. <clears throat> um, sort it make is a sort, yes, is, yeah, it is, yes, sort it make, yes, it's the, it's those. <laughs> Yep, sort it mate is the uh, function you got to call. It's good. Um. <laughs> uh. oh, okay, wait, wait. What's what's this about? Well, here's some chica. Yeah, what's in here? This is uh, Mr. Alan Webster's thing, but yeah, I'm not sure what how it links to what he's talking about earlier. Uh, I'm running a, a GLL GLTF2 parser right now. Decoding base 64 to binaries is quite easy. Find the alphabet for it and they've created it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Pretty cool. Good stuff. Yeah, it's quite popular nowadays, GLTF. It's quite easy to write a uh, to write a file out. Um, quite nice. Uh, reading one in, I guess you have to support more. That's what these different programs that output it. But as long as you um, know which program is output and you a GLTF file, it will be easier. And if you need to support more, you can just Add it in, I guess. Um, okay, so what I want to test out now is if the sync code works as intended, if you will. Um, so what I don't want to do is probably say, probably look at the first dispatch, I reckon, uh, here. So let's put a core breakpoint in. This just uh, break programmatically breaks for us automatically. But uh, 
Whoops. Did I not initialize my my GPU? Oh, I didn't. Whoops. It was zero initialized, wasn't it? Uh, let's just We only need two right now. All right. Let's try that out. Okay, so now for the breakpoint in there. So this is the first dispatch to be called. Uh, let's take a look at the barrier that gets output. Um, so, what resource are you? Oh, I don't have, oh, debug name. There it is. UI draw commands, nope. Shoot, all right, let's restart that. B. Um, resource debug name. Globals, continue, next one. Draw 3D buffer. So it is there without me putting it in there. Um, and if we look here, what it's going to do. Um, so the before sync state, before access mode is going to be none. Um, and then with the after access mode is uh, a few that is hex, hex, right? Oh, so of course it's seven. Of course it's seven. So um, that means it's odd, it's odd, so it means read, right? And then no overlap, I guess. Um, so let's just get into that function and see the translate. So read yes, is texture no. So you need to put the storage read bit on. Right, storage read bit on, excellent. So that seems all right. Um, Okay, so that's on the first shader that gets called. What about the second shader? Does it show up? Uh, how many resources we got? Two, okay. Uh, it hit the break point, I guess, yep. Um, so we're gonna view the name. And the name says surface, next. And the name says draw 3D buffer. Uh, why is that? Um, right, it's a bit of a bit of a bug then. Um, Always sync. Oh shoot. Okay, one of it didn't do the draw 2D buffer. That was a mistype. Um Okay. So when we do the synchronization code, then I think I've got the logic. A little bit wrong. Oh, first of all, we didn't copy this to the indirect. Um, and second of all, so it was only happening on dispatches, but not dispatching directs. Um, and then second of all, this is a problem. So. Right, here's where we do the tracking basically. So it was right ball. Oh, profile individual shader. That is always enabled actually. Because we're, we're profiling where I want there to be an explicit barrier between them anyway. Um, so if we disable this profile mode, then we can double check it again. Uh, what I would want to do though is probably. Um, 
you know, let's and zero this for a second. And then in the probably the Vulcan code where we uh, do that pipeline barrier. Resource barrier, is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, let's put a breakpoint here. Uh, resource debug name. So this is the first one that's going to get first dispatch. Uh, resources count, we've got four of them. Uh, so we go to the next one. Labels, okay, go to the next one. Shoot, I missed one. Right, so the previous one was draw 3D, this was one's draw 2D. That makes sense. It does show up the first time. Um, we can test that out by doing like array minus one dot. There you go, draw 3D. So that is correct. So if we continue to the next one, that'll be the next dispatch that does a barrier. Um, let's have a look at that. The next dispatch that does a barrier, it shouldn't, we shouldn't see any of this um, draw um, 3D or draw 2D buffers in sync code anymore. Excellent. So see here it says resources count one. Um, that means we didn't, for this, next dispatch that happened, it didn't try and put sync code down for those uh, buffers. So they only get synced once to say they're going to be read, 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 write. Now there will be a second time when we go and render them. Um, so we need to test that out. The way we test that out is at the bottom, uh, where we synchronize on these. Yeah, we're going to test that out. So I put a breakpoint here. Uh, we don't have the breakpoint in, in the Vulcan one anymore. And we'll follow it through and just see like, oh, okay, does it um, behave as we expect? Would you consider going back to your OpenGL? Uh, no. Um, as much as Vulcan is very complicated and yeah, it's kind of annoying. Um, plus all the stuff they just keep chucking into it all the time. Um, like a ray tracing API and whatever, it just seems like you're kind of stepping backwards. You know, there's all these extensions that keep coming out. And also they release new, new ways of doing basically the same thing and kind of stepping back on some of their initial designs. Um, it still enables you to do much more, better, much better things than OpenGL does. Um, like I'm able to write my own C to Spear V compiler and share code between CPU and GPU. And it's a uh, compiles semantically similar code, like much more similar code than GLSL. Um, and I can share C, um, data structures with the same padding and alignment rules as CPU side on the GPU and share those structures. Um, you can actually have pointers as well, kind of nowadays, but it's not going to work on DirectX or Metal like it does in Vulkan, unfortunately. So I haven't done that yet in my shader compiler, but there's a lot more like new features, which just makes it better. But it, the problem is, is it is a lot more work. Um, so if you're just, if you're being an indie dev trying to get your game out, using OpenGL is, is, is probably the right choice. Uh, this is my side, side project. So I'm just, uh, advancing my knowledge in this area, um, and learning some more Vulcan along the way. Yeah, C compiler's public. Um, I'm actually planning on doing a new release soon. Um, I recently fixed like four bugs with it actually like yesterday. Um, so now it, it does, it errors if you write to write only resource or write only buffer. And there's a preprocessor 
it crashed when you didn't close a brace, but now that's an error. And the Ternary operators were processing comma operators for some reason, so I fixed that. Um, so, yeah, it's all on, all on uh, GitHub, being scanned by robots and, yeah, anyway. Um, all up on here. It's got some, it's got sample code, sample projects, and documentation as well. Um, so yeah, it only goes to Vulcan right now because I haven't done any other backends ever. So no worries. Um, but yeah, if you're going to check it out, get the latest Git because that is probably going to be the thing I'm going to release, and it's got tons of fixes and improvements. So. Yeah, do that one. Um, you work with Vulcan, just curious how you think about OpenGL situation. Fair play. How difficult is it to ship games in OpenGL C compared to Unity on Uh, I don't know, because I've never done either. Um, so, um, so we do a dispatch. So what I want to, what I want to know is if it does decide to do it. Okay. Let's put the breakpoint here. Now, how many resources we got to sync? Ugh. Two. Uh, but there should be three, right? So I'm, I'm sure it's just going to be syncing on the surface depth and depth texture, not the draw 2D buffer. We can just double check that, but I'm sure that's the, what it's going to be doing, right? Uh, resource debug name surface draw 2d buffer oh okay that's great oh the depth texture already got sunk beforehand so I didn't need to sync it again right interesting so it does do it but is the thing correct that is the question so what it was before is used as read and write okay How's it going to be used now? Read and write. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. It's as if what you want to do is say the other ones are implicit syncs and these new ones are explicit syncs. So, right, first of all, that doesn't need to be synced on because no depth texture is passed up into this one. Um, so what we're going to do is change the prototype. Sync resource, boolean, implicit, or is it, mm. so it's kind of an internal thing you want. Um, I guess you, you'll never call this one. is explicit yeah uh so whenever you call these ones here this is always these are explicit syncs but when yeah so these are explicit syncs um, but when you do these, these are implicit six. Um, so how we want to, there's some tracking somewhere, isn't there? Where's the tracking? I've got to remember to remove this. Um, uh, 
Oh, it's sync state, isn't it? So you fetch your resource state uh, if before, right? After, so there's an after, it doesn't merge. Okay, here we go. So you'll simply just do this. If if you don't know if the previous one was an explicit, so boolean is explicit. Okay, so sync state is explicit or equals is explicit and what you're going to say is if it was not explicit and is explicit we're going to clear the acts after access mode to nothing and then we'll just basically apply ours on top of nothing um, so this means we just have to set this one up um, to make sure it's zeroed, right? So I think you do that when you say, I don't know, it's at the end of a dispatch somewhere. Yeah, it does go over all those, right? See, it's already made into a function, which it should kind of probably be, but anyway. Um, false. Okay, so that should fix things. So now it should be read only uh, when it's used a second time. And I hope we don't break anything else. Okay, so here's the final one where it does a read only on the draw 2D buffer. But obviously, there's an implicit. Um, wait a minute, that would be first. Um, you don't, to, yeah, you don't to allow any implicits in. I've just realized. So the explicits can come and wipe, wipe it, but the, um, implicits can't be applied. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it does. Yep. Resolves the alias. If sync state is explicit and is not explicit, return. Right, so do not allow implicit syncs to overwrite our explicit syncs. Or to, to merge in with our explicit syncs. Yeah, 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 that'd be good. That'd be good. Um, wait, sync state, if sync state is, is implicit, yeah. So wipe the implicit state. as our explicit state yeah um as an explicit state has been as specified yeah that that'll, that'll work all right let's give that a give that a go oh oh no went too far okay so we're going to go down to here. So it's going to do some two implicit syncs. Uh, let's go to the final result. Here's the resource barrier. So we'll put a break here. Uh, we'll print out the resources count. There's three now. So this should be surface, yes. Draw 2D buffer, yes. Wait a minute. 
Yeah, we should see what this one entails. Um, so the before is going to be read, write. Yep, that's true. Read and write has gone into those. The after or destination is going to read and that's it. Perfect. That's what we wanted. Okay, so the next one would be actually a uh, draw 3D. Um, buff is going to come into here. Yeah, the draw 3D buff is going to be like, hey, mark this one as read write. Technically, that's not correct. It shouldn't really be doing that. Uh, can we have a way to say do nothing? Um, so, if you could probably say sync none, you can add this one in. That'd be interesting. Um, it's an explicit sync none. Now that one, you want it to have the wiping capabilities, right? But to also not, um, so it's going to go into, the problem is though, you, you would have already added it to the sort of next resource to sync. Um, that's the problem. It's already in, in an array and you have to sort of go and delete, delete it out there maybe. Um, So for now, I guess we'll just leave those ones alone because at least we have correct sync code. Um, it's just doing, it's just doing a little bit too much at the end, which I don't think is a big problem, but we can always look into that later. But yeah, this sync code is now correct. So let's just make sure that runs and then we'll, um, yeah, that flickering is a different problem. Yes, here's our balls. Um, yeah. So I think let's. Hmm. Yeah, I think let's carry on with this now. Let's just uh, do a git. Oh, I've got to remove that and zero. So we've uh, sorted out the sync code. Excellent. Git commit dash a. Um, uh, correct sync code for draw 3D slash 2D buffers. Um, so they now, they now sync, they now always Think implicitly uh, on every dispatch as read write no overlap. Um, except for when they are explicitly. Synced when they are being rendered. Read from to be rendered. Boom. Yeah, it's very true. If you have like a, um, if you have a very targeted, like if you're just making like a 2D game, um, and you know exactly what you want to make, rolling your own engine is not like too too bad. Especially if you're using like SDL2 or some, some libraries sort of help you do some of the groundwork or you have some like code laying about previously, right? Um, 
Yeah, using other people's engines has pros and also has cons. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Vulcan isn't prototype friendly. You probably want to use... Um, you even want to have your own... Yeah. You probably want to use like... Well, even OpenGL is not really prototype friendly. Um, maybe Raylib's the most sort of prototype friendly thing because you can just sort of like do a bunch of code that you just like throw away eventually or okay you would uh turn into more optimized code mm -hmm. yeah i've seen the wicked engine i've seen it on um twitter slash x slash whatever um yeah it's good it looks good like it's um impressive it's made by one guy um yeah so now we want to move into Figuring out what's happening with my balls. Not this, but why oh why if I say, right now I'm saying, hey, every cluster has 64 spheres, right? Four by four by four set of spheres. So there's eight clusters here. But if I change that hard-coded line, it doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah, uh, spheres count equals 64. Here it is. I just hard code it there because yes. Um, it should be reading it from the tree. And if, but it seems like the tree is like getting, yeah, we, we update it every frame, right? But yeah, then we get like a, a little party that goes on. And when you move the camera, it's wrong. Sums up with the binning. I don't know what though. But yeah. And also this box in the middle is kind of off as well. This white one, maybe we want to fix that too. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think people just don't want to make their own scripting languages because Lua is something that people already know helps people come and use their engine, doesn't it? But the idea, I guess, is they write their sort of... Yeah. I think the idea is they try and write all the performance code in C++ and that. But maybe it's just the... The scripting is there for so people can easily, I guess, more easily write um, prototype code, if you will. And then when it needs to become more performant, they do it in C++ or whatever. I don't know. I don't understand it either, to be honest. Um... Yeah, actually, I might fit this, fix this box problem quick. So let's leave that in just like that. I had a problem with my access line banner box drawing code. Um, yeah, so if I put it on cluster eight, yep, 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 yep. Um, right. Can I, can I move? I want to move this. Um, can I say translation dot x plus equals graphics global time? I just want to visualize how this time sticks, I think it's called, for seconds. How does this move? Does it move along the x?
Wait, it's in view space, isn't it? View from local. Oh. Right, let's make that move a bit faster so I can see it. Yeah, it should be moving it in local space, maybe. Yeah, so it moves it along the x-axis in view space. Um, so I think we might have to translate our offset. Yes, I think the way I'm maybe modifying this is probably wrong. Um, yeah, I need an offset. Right. I think it got me an idea. Um, let's add another one. And we'll call it offset in local space. So I'm thinking that what we need to do is make another transform, we'll call it T. And then the T transform. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is correct then either. Um, but let's just set this up, uh, translation is equal to mol uh, vec3 vector, right? Okay. Translation. Wait, no, 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 no. We're multiplying a position, like a point. We have a transform, yeah, 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 yeah. So the full-on transform and that. Because, mm. yeah, that will add the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that will, that will work. Let's try that out. So this needs a, it's got, there's a center position in local space. Oh, where is it? Mm. Cluster position in local space. That is our boy. Right, so we did change uh, function prototype has changed. Shoot. Hmm. There's a CP side one as well, but let's just not change that just yet. I want to play about with it. Where's that saying unused? Damn it. Um. Right, we'll come back and edit it. Put the proper version in, this, in the CPU side code when we can verify this one works correctly. Right, maybe I've sort just done it. That looks correct. Um, it might not look correct because we've just got all this stuff like bugging out. But if I bring back, I think that might be right. Um. Accidental maths. That's my style. Um, so if I re-enable that sort of spheres count hack, will we enable them all on? There we go. So we're seeing the that's the cluster we're putting the debug shapes around. See, and it's it's staying with that one there. 
Um, I just, just should we just check that the other clusters uh, works with the other ones? So let's try the debug info with cluster zero. That's the root uh, cluster. So that's the parent of those two by two by two sets of clusters. So it's the whole thing, right? So there's the LODs. That's what, what LOD zero would cover, but this is not LOD zero, this is LOD one, right? Because we're seeing it as an eight by eight by eight instead of a four by four by four. Okay, so I think that's working fine. Let's try cluster nine, which is the sibling to cluster eight, which we just saw earlier. So it's one of the, yes, this is cluster eight here. This will be cluster nine. Cool, I think that's working good enough. Ought to be good enough. Um, so now we can move on to trying to f debug on why we have to set spheres to 64 um, to get it to render fine. And if we set it to anything other than that, it's like, hmm, it doesn't work. So so things, things up custom responses whilst line, lines share of CPU time is in the traversals, physics, power, finance, etc. all on C++. Right. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think that's how ideally you want it, how ideally it works. But then like, uh, people write more and more complicated games now. And, um, they end up having to learn in the script and language, how do you do the most performant thing? Like in Python, I think there's there's a way to write a for loop where the iteration doesn't get in the way of the well, it, the uh, it, iteration of the for loop itself doesn't impact the performance as much as the other one does. Um, and there's silly little quirks that you have to deal with with script and languages when your COVID scales mm -hmm. enough. But yeah, I think like basically prototyping and then attracting people to the engine is probably the two big ones. And then I guess it's just a poor mistake if people write a whole big game in with Lua or something like that or Python or whatever. Um, spheres, 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 spheres. So, why don't we debug what's going on with these spheres, right? Surely, um, so here's our if we're number eight. So, we're just going to go ahead and do a nice print and just be like, hey, give me the hexadecimal version of that thing for me, please. Um, actually, it's two of them big, isn't it? Uh, so I can just do this. Because it's um, 232-bit integers, because you know, we haven't enabled 64-bit ints on our GPU thing, so yeah. Okay, where does that come from? Here, uh, tiles, sure. Tile binning, delete that one. All right, do we see any prints now? Right, so apparently there's nothing. Absolutely nothing on that one. And there's absolutely nothing on that one. Right, interesting. So I thought my edit would have at least made some LOD, some spheres of that LOD, but I am mistaken. So what I wanna view is like, 
so clearly um uh right so what i need to do then is when we're going down and doing our make persistent so make persistent is like hey we've built this volume in this temporary sort of building space now copy it into a persistent place in memory um so what i want to do is i want to um say okay well we're copying the node here this child is non this child is existent okay 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 so we're copying this node so we're just going to say node dot spheres no yeah so if spheres sphere bit set spheres bit set zero and oh sorry or I meant so if either of these have got some bits we're gonna print the bits out um so we'll say like cluster blah so DST No, this is not the child though, isn't it? So we'll put up here. No, we won't. DST child cluster index. This needs to be replaced with um Uh, probably something like BC source volume cluster node source child cluster index. It should probably could have done the destination one, but anyway, I just I did uh, source one, but it's fine. Okay, so let's debug that. So I think we're only copying over LOD zero and LOD one. So we should only see results for LOD one in the terminal. Um, we see nothing. Where's the copy child stuff here? We're seeing nothing, which is bizarre to me. Oh, have I disabled? Reconstruct. Yeah. It's a big mistake. Look at Rust. It's made with Unity. Oh, okay, the game. <laughs> it's so scripty. So it's scripted in C sharp and it makes let's get some more interesting on screen while I read. Get the balls. Um makes my graphics card scream every time I play it. But for some odd reason, every major game. Oh yeah. Uh engine company is scared of C or C because of pointers, so they enforce safe languages. It makes things run pretty slow sometimes. Yeah, that's the GC I guess around the frame drops. <laughs> yeah but yeah if you're cpu bound then i guess you can blame the um blame the scripting language um Oh, Athano, sorry, Athando, Athano, thank you so much for the uh, the raid, appreciate it, how did the stream go? Hopefully I didn't butcher your name, appreciate the raid. 
Welcome readers. We're currently um, working on a game uh, from scratch in C and Vulkan. Um, we're trying to get a custom unique render art style using a bunch of balls. Um, we're currently trying to get our LOD system working. This is LOD1. LOD0 is a 4x4x4 four by four by four set of spheres. LOD one is an eight by eight by eight set of spheres and a cluster is a four by four by four set of spheres and it's all an LOD tree of clusters. Um, so we're trying to get these to render without glitches. This glitch we don't really care about because it's something to do with the ray tracer, but I'm trying to get the LOD system to work. So I'm just trying to figure out where my balls are at and we're going to try and get them on the screen. Oh good, thanks. You learn a bit of C and uh, struggling. No worries. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Collectors of stuff. Balls yet? Yep. Um, I hope you all are collectors of those too. Uh, so I've got plenty for you right here. How's it going, collector stuff? Yeah, we, we all struggle with these, you know, uh, programming sometimes. So right now I'm just trying to debug why oh why. Um, it's saying I've got no no spheres. So the reason why we're seeing spheres being rendered on the screen here is because I'm explicitly when I'm going over my clusters, I just say, oh yeah, they've got 64 spheres. Don't worry about it. Um, but what I'm yeah when I go over them to render them, I say yeah yeah they've got 64. So it's hard coded. But I only I want to remove that. And I want to read it from the actual cluster itself, and the cluster itself has zero. So, a bit bizarre. So I'm just investigating why at the moment. So I'm just going to the build code. So apparently we build the whole tree. We build. We do the refinement across all the things. That's the thing that should produce the low LOD spheres, but it hasn't. Um, so I think we can do some inspection. And figure out why. Um, yes, and then it, it only copies the first two levels, but that's fine. Like I'm, only, I'm not copying the rest of the levels just yet. I've disabled it just so we can debug a bit easier. Um, so go to the refinement quickly. So this thing is um, starts off at the leaf nodes, so the bottom of the tree, the highest level of detail, it goes up and it basically down samples it all in 3D and all that jazz. So we should be doing something like this. This should be happening on LOD zero. So what I want to say So get this node, you've got like <clears throat> Yeah, you look into the child node and then you're looking at a two by two set of spheres for that child. And you're seeing if the two by two by two set of spheres are set. And if seven of them are out of eight or more, right? If seven or eight of them are set, then we'll um, add ourselves a sphere in there. Right, so what I'm looking at doing is like saying, okay, if um, volume location, I don't even remember this anymore, volume cluster lock, LOD, there we go. If node location, if that's equal to one, can I do some printing please? Uh, I'm kind of looking at saying LOD one has um, down sampled a sphere, right?
Oh yeah, I've got it because I've... Anyway, let's just do that. Alright. So LED1 should be down something in a sphere, right? Because you've got... Or maybe we should move to LED2. Okay, let's look at two for a moment. Okay, I don't think any of these are down sampling spheres. I'm not seeing any print code show up. Um, I want to figure out why that is. So we can do some more printing, I think. Um, so what is this? Oh, I didn't do a new line. They ain't going to print out nice. Okay, so what we're seeing is absolutely nothing. Where's my refines? They're here, the refine notes. Interesting, why are these not showing up for LED1? LED1 must have children, so what is this? Did I mess up the children bit set for them? I'm not seeing this at all. Are you really saying that LED1 doesn't have any... Uh, what is going on? Let's always enable this. Right, so we're clearly seeing things show up, okay? Let's go to LED zero, does that have children? Right, what about LED three or whatever? Right, so this one shows up with some children bit sets being printed out. LED two, but if these have children, like, something's messed up. The LED2 has children, then LED1 doesn't. Because <laughs> we, had, we had that problem in, um, Remove child from current node. Um, are some of them getting removed then? Let's disable this code and see if that's fine. Nope. Okay, so if we, that code's not been run anyway. Um, but did we see, so we make it persistent, so after we've built the, the tree anyway, and we copy to make these guys persistent, I could have swore we did some debugging here. Uh, 
Um, yeah, okay, let's do it here as well. Let's just say... So you, let's just see what children they have here. No, these ones won't show up. What about... Here. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, if it has children, then carry on. Interesting. Yeah, sums up my tree. Okay, let's only keep the low eight bits. See if it prints out anything different. Okay, so clearly, uh, I think this is LOD one, because uh, this would be. Uh, I've got to double check that. Uh, I must print out the LOD as well. So volume, cluster, location, LOD. Plop that in there. Hmm. We would have probably edited that actually thinking about it. So let's copy the destination version instead. Um, yep. Um, I want to pop in just the LED number there. LED one, then LED two. The LED one has this, these children. Uh, this, this should be in hexadecimal, but it's a bit set, right? But we haven't done that. Um, so why do they have that here, but they don't have it in the refine? That's the confusing bit. So they have it here. That is the question. Hey, Sokom, how's it going? Um. Oh, I see. Yeah, it was written in English, not C. But yeah, I see the joke. I see, I see. How you been? How's it going? Yeah, maybe I should change it to and and, you know. Logical that way. Then it'd still be zero, wouldn't it? Um... Yeah, so we're starting from the roots and we go up to the parents. Um, right, actually, let's go back to that code. I want to see what is their... Um, Do they have this sort of like cluster start index thing? Let's put another integer after there. I want to see that variable. No, they should have um, some cluster nodes. Yeah, they do, right? So LOD1 has some child bits and it has a start index to where those children nodes live. Here it does. Um, but 
But also, why is that? Shoot. Right. Read this properly. Yeah, so now it's only showing, it's not saying showing LOD 2 anymore, it's only showing LOD 1, which are the proper children of LOD 0, right? So that's, that looks fine. That data looks fine. So why? Why isn't that data available in Refine at least? And again, let's try that. We've tried the thing here with the spheres, right? To print out the spheres, and the spheres just seem to not have any. <clears throat> any Let's print that out. It's all a bunch of zeros. Ooh, that ain't good. So the refine is obviously not working. Um, so let's just not print anything there for a minute. So something weird's happening with the refine then. So when we build the tree initially, like the children bit set must be set properly, right? Oh, we didn't put a bloody um, barrier here, did we? So, get the wave 32s. So, there's two wave 32s processing here. Uh, you get them to calculate their bit sets on each wave, get the wave index. Um, if you're the first wave, uh, you are the first thread in a wave. Day two. So those guys will then store their bit sets into the into the right places, and then you will read it back from LDS. So that could have been the problem, is the children bit set wasn't set up properly initially, but then... How? How is it able to get a bit set at the end of the chain, right? At the end of the whole building process. We recalculate that bit set again, somehow. How does it do that? I think something's a bit fishy here with these bits and bit sets. Mm -hmm. um, so the refinement starts on all the leaf nodes. Um, you get a leaf node per thread group. Um, Yeah, but it says it has no none of these on LO on LOD one. It says you you can't even get into here. So are we not even being able to reach, or is LOD one even firing here? That's another good question. Does does it even go go up the whole tree?
Oh, we're seeing stuff show up now. Yeah, okay, it's a lot of threads do it saying that. But we should say if your sphere index is equal to uh, zero. So the first thread in, in the in the two waves. So only that will show at once. Okay, so what 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 I what I'm seeing is that we are I think we've just corrected the problem. It was the LDS and uh there wasn't a a barrier uh, a barrier to stop the two waves from synchronizing. Okay. So then we get a proper bit set here then. So what about do we see that in here? Can I just say like Can I see that shot? No. No. Okay, so we can debug this a little bit further now then. I think. Let's move this in here. See what we get. Right, so we're seeing four threads. Sorry. Four nodes get into here. Four nodes. Maybe we should be seeing more. Four nodes in LOD one. I was expecting to see more of them, to be honest. <clears throat> um because there's actually eight nodes, right? It's a, kind of like an oak tree. There's only four of those guys. Those are good. Um. So let me just double check if we've forgot any other if we've got any other problems with this LDS thing. So we wrote to LDS think read. Maybe let's make these all for a moment. Right, I didn't change anything. Um Yeah, I think that's all okay. Right, mm. the thing, let's look at this occupation map again. I want to view that in render doc. And I hope it shows up in render doc because I think it wasn't showing up last time we looked. So take a look at the occupation map again. To do like a down sample of it. So here, down sample. The occupation map is a bit slow each bit represents a cluster that's fully occupied and that's what we used to do the downsum well we can use that to help to see why we should be able to visually see the 3d where's something two-dimensional
this one. Well, I could just do the resource inspector. Occupation map. That's where the down sample happens. Um, yeah, as we go through the slices, you see the the edit appear, which is just this. We only put one sphere down in the middle, but we should make it. Oh, a bit buggy there. Yeah, I don't know if that's just render doc though. But then, as we go up the MIPS, we're not seeing anything. But I've seen it. Yeah, I think this is just a render doc problem because I've I've printed out code and it does show up. Right, I guess we're not use that then. Help us find the problem. Um. Right, so at least see, at least we're seeing four of them show up. But I would expect to see. Um. them all to really show up. Where's that sort of edit anyway? Let's make it 120 or whatever. Let's just make it cover the whole the whole space a little bit better. Now let's see the printing. Okay, now we're seeing all eight of them show up. Okay. That's better. It's got all, all children are there. Um, Actually, let's see that render doc thing again, because it was able to show us the first MIP. Like the high, or, or the largest res MIP or whatever. Um, Okay, so as you not it's going to the edges, that's what we want. I think it's kind of missing them a bit there, but all right. The downside ones are not showing in render doc for some reason, but I swear they're fine. Um, okay, so we should be able to debug this a bit better now. So, do we get anything that shows up in here? Right. And if we don't, that's painfully wrong then, because we should be seeing. All right, nothing's shown up in the print code. Okay, so now we can debug this. Um, so what number are we sort of getting with these guys? Zero all the way, okay. So why are we getting zero? Let's see the inputs. Um, so the, we, we're trying to find a two by two by two set of spheres in the child node. So this would be an LOD two. And we're saying, so we're finding the two by two by two that represent this, this single sphere basically, right? So imagine if you have, let's see more visually. Um, yeah, yeah, so you have your, four by four by four set of spheres. That's a cluster. You've got this sphere here. You're trying to see what is it? Is there a, if there's a lower, you're trying to see if there's a lower LOD. Um, yeah, I don't know if I've handled the case where if it's been set explicitly painted or not, but essentially the, this, has a high resolution version of it and it's four or it's eight clusters, right? Two by two by two set of clusters where each cluster has four spheres in it, right? So this sphere here uses these four spheres. Okay. Eight spheres, two by two by two set of spheres to represent that sphere. So we're lo looking in the 
this cluster um, for those spheres, basically. <coughs> so I think I've just messed something up a bit. So I want to see like my pass bit set and my Let's check my pass bit sets first. Um, so I don't have precision in my printf. I've not done it yet. So we're just going to deal with um, two separate versions. That's fine. So the past bit says the one you, the bits you want to look at. Uh, let's just check these guys first. Right. Um, so they're all in sphere zero. What is dispatch index? Yeah, it's fine. Right, so here's all of the, um, maybe we should hone in on a single cluster. But, so where you're seeing 3.3, 3, uh, 3, 3 obviously, wait, wait, in, in, in X, 3.3 3 represents, um, so we've got 4 by 4 by 4 here, so each bit represents a sphere, so e every 4 bits is a row. So this so three three means there's two rows where the first two have spheres. Um, so there's two rows there. So each each digit is a row basically. Then there's two rows where there's not a sphere. So that's a slice of four by four, right in two D. And then the next slice starts with two rows where the bits are on. And then this word here is the slice behind it, um, and it's got absolutely nothing. So that's fine. Um, C is three, or is two bits on not at the end of the row. Uh, this one is missing. It's missing a, um... yeah, so I think we are, uh, the way we're looking for these is just kind of wrong, I think. Um... Yeah. Um, so what we should probably target is an actual cluster. Um, so we should probably just say if cluster child index is equal to zero. Let's target the first one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print out two things. We're going to print out um, Uh, what can I use as a way to sort of like, um, I don't know, I'll just use a comma then I guess. Um, so I guess we'll just do something like this, right? So let's just put the spheres, the spheres we're checking in there as well. Let's have all the data available, see what's going wrong. Um, Do we want to say, do we want to say what sphere we're looking at as well? Probably the sphere index in there as well. Um, that we're trying to downsample. 
uh, sorry, this the sphere that we're trying to get a down sample of, if you will. All right. So we should have all the bells and whistles. What the crap is going on here? Um. What? What am I? What indices am I seeing? Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, so for the first child, so imagine if you have this cluster, it's got f it's got eight children, right? The spheres that sit here are going to be zero, one, four, and five, and then the ones that are behind it, right? So they will be seven, 16, 17, Uh, 2021, right? So this should be the numbers we should be seeing. 0, 1, 4, 5, yes. 16, 17, 2021, 20, good, okay. Ooh, right, so I'm glad that's... Um, that's, that's good. So we just gotta make sure that these all make some kind of sense. Um, so the one on the left is the Oh, <laughs> apparently the children, LOD2 has nothing also. Right, so that's the reason why it's... Right, um, but, but, but let's look at... Okay, LOD2 has... Apparently the children, there's no ch uh, spheres in the children either. But let's just make sure that these masks are correct because that could be the this could be the problem that the lower LODs are getting as well and therefore not bringing up any LODs because it starts at the bottom. So for the first sphere, this one is going to get the first two. It's going to get... Um, yeah, as we saw earlier, right? 3-3 three, three means first two spheres on a row, right? And each... So the first two rows have the first two spheres on the row, right? So this sphere here is trying to downsample from these set of spheres. But how's that a two by two by two? That's only, oh yeah, yeah, those two and then the next slice as well, the first two. So it's the two by two by two here, and then the slice behind it as well, okay? So that seems correct. The first one seems correct. Obviously the two slices behind that are not part of that sphere. So the next sphere along is, C, is just C for some reason. So that's a bit buggered, I think. Yeah, that's definitely buggered. Yeah, that was buggered. So it shouldn't be. It should be C C that you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C C basically. So why oh why did that not shift right? So what am I doing wrong? <clears throat> So it kind of shifted fine, it shifted a bit too much, I think. Um, so if you're doing a 3-3 three, three and you're shifting it. Um, oh. So, Cypress, so thank you so much for the raid, appreciate it. I'm currently trying to debug why my spheres aren't, aren't showing up. But yeah, we're doing a uh, rendering some uh, spheres now. We've got an LOD system, uh, but we're trying to figure out why the LODs are not um, LODing. Um, yeah. There's a... Uh, for some reason, uh, the downsampling code is not working. 
But yeah, just checking that out. How did the stream go? Um, so I think this number is so something that either a zero or one, is that true? That's not true because your local goes from zero to three then, right? Oh wait, no, it's mod two. Yeah, it'll be a zero or one. Jacko child node has seven or more. So he was basically saying if it's even. If it's even or zero, it'll be zero. If it's odd, it'll be one. Right, so since it's odd, it's odd on the X, it'll be one times two. Uh, so shift to the right by two. That's the wrong way. So this is actually means I think it's meant to be left. Yeah, I've just got my bits the wrong way around. All right, well, where else, else have I done this? Oh, shoot. So I copied it from here. And I put them, okay, I did it the other way around, that's why. This is when I'm checking if they're surround, using the, um, uh, the occupation map that we saw earlier in RenderDoc where I use the, some tricks to see if all of the clusters have been surrounded by other clusters so we can get rid of them. Um, I see now. Right, so I just did that the wrong way around. Right, okay. Um, Yeah, this is, I don't know if these are the right, which one is the right way to do it. Um, should I stick my threes up here basically? And change it the other way around. Maybe this is fine. Oh no, it all depends what the bit set is. Um, yeah, X, yeah, X is good at the start. This is correct for this one at least. Not sure about my occupation map then. But it seems to work fine. Maybe that was... Alright, so what do we see now? Oh! I've got things that show up now. It seems like we fixed it. So essentially what we, yeah, 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 excellent. So what we're seeing now is bit, yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So what was happening is this code was broken and it was debugging it right at the top, like right at the end of the pipe. And uh, so, but was finding that there's no input data coming in. And so obviously by fixing that, it's fixed all the lower, um, LODs in the pipe. So it's recursed all the way up to here now and it should, seems to have fixed it. So if we look here at the end, it seems like we're printing out the in LOD1 that we've got some spheres inside these LOD1 clusters now. So we should be able to throw those out. Um, so I think we have a bit of a problem where if your cluster has zero spheres, it, there's problems that happen. Um, yeah, but maybe that's just because they went inside an if statement they should have gone into, which we hard coded to on. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So we go to, back to prepare. Wait, where's where's these prints coming from? Right. So this one's in make persistent, and we said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is definitely LED one. Just firing this. Good, 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 good. So we'll delete all this code now. Right, it's good, make sure we didn't delete anything we shouldn't have. Cool. Right, so back to the prepare clusters. 
shader. This is the one that we prepare them for render. Um, so without further ado, we're going to delete this code here, which is hard code and it's say render all of them. And if we fire it off, why are we seeing all of them? We shouldn't be seeing all of them. We shouldn't be seeing all these fears. Um, see what that's like. Uh, so this says 16 and 26. Which is definitely less than 64. So that means then they're probably hard coded. So this is then going to pre-allocate in the tiles and say, hey, by the way, there is this many spheres in these tiles. And it actually gets in, binned in there later in a tile bin shader. So I think then I've just hard coded it in here then. Yeah, I've, I've just put the, okay. I get a thread, a thread per, a thread per sphere inside of a cluster, thread group per cluster, right? One thread group per cluster. The thread group comes in here, fishes out the cluster to render, right? Thread group index. Gets the cluster. Now we didn't do this. There we go. Right, that'll work. Kinda. So this is the lower LOD, so maybe this is ooh, a bit wrong down there, I can tell you that for sure. But at least we're seeing something sharp proper now. So what I want to try and do next is um, let's uh, increase the fidelity. Let's try LOD two. So we, what we're going to do is um, enable the code which was which is disabled here. Uh, we do LOD three now. Um, And let's um, change the prepare clusters for render shader. Um, and we're going to say, we're going to let it do. We got, we're going to say, okay, if you're less than, um, 16, I reckon, because You've got cluster zero, which sits at cluster index zero. Then you've got the eight LOD one clusters, which sit from eight to 16. So those ones are going to allow to traverse down the tree and then carry it. So basically this shader is launched one for every LOD. Um, so it's launched once for the first LOD does all of the clusters in, LO, in that LOD, and then it will pass it on to the next time it's called in here, this is what this code does. It passes it on to the next one. And this one here will render those ones. So we want to say, okay, if it's greater than or equal to 16. So it should render LOD2. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, LOD2. I don't know why this is flickering, but it seems like this one doesn't look so bad. So this is one, one ellipsoid, which is sort of painted down in the volume. And yeah, I think we painted down at LOD six or whatever. So I guess let's just, you know, fire it away, you know, let's uh, just put back, let's delete all this code, which 
stops it from doing anything. And let's just unleash the beast and just see how much my computer froze. It does require investigation, that is for sure. Right, if the computer dies, I'll be back. Right, too much printing. But it runs. Right, got to delete that. Yeah, I think we're going to be running really low FPS because we've probably got a lot of spheres that are just being chucked on screen. But, okay, so it turns out the flickering gets worse based on the other element days. Yeah, I guess the flickering does need to be looked at. Right, so should we force an LOD in the prepare clusters for render then, shall we? Um, or if the LOD is that, so I guess we'll say like const highest LOD and we can just sort of like change this easier. Well, no, I could have just taken away Crying out loud. All right. Let's do, let's take away a few. I think the highest is a six then. So we've gone down to four. Yeah. Oh, so the further. The fur like the higher the LOD, the further away I have to get before this sort of flickering will happen. Which is a bit weird. So we should definitely investigate this flickering. So let's take it down to LED 3 now. There's my LED 3. So the reason why it's probably doing this is because the tile being. And it's probably because they're getting filled up. Could that be what's happening? Because the bigger the... No, no, no. The smaller the spheres... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The smaller the spheres... The less space they take up on screen. Which then means the less over allocation we're going to do on the tiles. So the way we the way we render these spheres right now is we bin them into screen tiles. Each tile has an array of spheres. But we don't know how big that array is. So we over allocate it. So we have one big old array which holds all the spheres and we sub allocate that out for every tile. So when we prepare the cluster for render what we do is we get the number of spheres and we then go over all the tiles that it affects and we we add to the capacity the number of spheres we sort of max allocate it so i guess what's happening is as they get bigger uh we literally run out of room um so where's the um, allocate thing? This thing here. Um, so that's saying if it overflows. Um, spheres over allocated. Something like that. I got to print out a number because my Print macro is a bit buggered. Probably needs is probably fixable. Over allocated, over allocated, not over allocated. Over, and then this is when they're becoming over allocated. I'm sure. 
Yeah, over allocated. Okay. So, how do you fix that problem? Well, you can always allocate more memory. Um, that's one way to do it. More memory. Um, or we could try and figure out a better way to allocate these tiles. Um, Spheres buffer, this one. Spheres cap, whoops. I saw that constant, why didn't I go right to that? Right, so I did 200,000. So what's that 200,000 times? Hmm. Wait, what is LOD? Three though. Is it 32 cubed? Right, but I've over allocated. But the tiles are saying they want that many, right? Yeah, we over allocate in the tiles. Right, let's. Can we do. How big is this sphere structure? Right, five, five floats. So it's. Here's a few meg. Ain't too bad. Let's let's just over allocate this. Should be good enough. More memory. Well clearly it's not enough memory. Still. Because you've got to have enough to hold. Hmm. Maybe we think of a better strategy to like. Kind of interesting that even though you put the, um, even though you put the ellipse directly in the middle, you'll see there's like these guys that are hanging off the end and the ones at the bottom appear, but the ones at the top didn't. Even though the, there must be like an epsilon or the way the intersection check is happening is it's not really actually centered in the middle. It's probably like, yes, there's something's definitely wrong there with the way we're applying these. Yeah, because these ones have spheres at the bottom like that, whereas the top doesn't have any. See. So some in the position of where these spheres are in relation to the um, where those edit operations are is slightly offset by about half a sphere or something like that, I think. Um, but yeah, I think we need to think of a better strategy than what we're doing because um, yeah, this ain't, this ain't good at the moment. There's, there's a few problems. Um, well, if we had a good occlusion system, we would just simply be culling clusters and spheres. Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be culling whole clusters, um, which would then, which would then mean, come on, there it is. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be culling whole clusters early, which will then mean those won't even get allocated here. Uh, this also has a problem here where if a cluster covers like a very large region of the screen, this for loop will take ages because it goes over all the tiles. And tiles are 8 by 8 by 8 pixels, so you've got kind of a lot of tiles on the screen. So the closer you get, the slower it is. Uh, you'll see the time down there, it's going up to 10 milliseconds now. Um, 
Whereas if we go here, obviously it's far. Yeah, I wonder where the tile bidding is. Um, yeah, the prepare clusters, this thing jumps up. A lot more. It's not massive amounts actually, it's about two milliseconds, but still, it goes up to you sometimes. But that's not what you want. Um, and this is only for one model. Um, so what other problem is it? Um, and, and the other problem is, is it's over allocating. It's doing, it's doing like a worst case. Um, so we could instead just append this to a buffer. So we append this cluster to a buffer, which we already have. And we say, oh, you're going to render this. This one is one we're going to render. Then we do a separate pass, which goes over. Um, and so there's this shader which runs after the prepare clusters for render here called tile bin allocate. So we've already said in this sort of uh, clusters to uh, prepare clusters, we've already gone and up to that spheres count, uh, sorry, spheres capacity. So this just basically takes that spheres capacity of the tile and then bump allocates um, a range where to, where to put the spheres when we actually do the tile binning. So we probably, so we've done this in the past, right? We need a step before this. It's gonna go over all the clusters. Um, and then we should probably um, look at all of the spheres as well and probably do some, See, we're already kind of doing it here though in the tile bin. This is part of the problem. We already did it in the tile bin. And unless we have a fixed allocated number of spheres per tile, then you get the overflow problem that comes up. You could pre allocate it maybe. Because mm. I'm wondering if we'll have to duplicate all of this maths, but maybe it's not so bad in another, in the shader before, just to sort of see which bins it does go in. Um, and then allocate enough and then run basically the same code again. And then insert it in the bins. Um, or you could do it, do it another way, where you bin all of the clusters. Okay, there's another approach. So you got these as tiles. You could bin clusters in region in in chunks, if you will. Chunks are larger, so. This is, these screen tiles are obviously too big, but the screen tiles are white. The chunks are in, the chunk grid is in purple or pink, whatever. Um, so what you want to do is we'll probably take the, take the clusters, bin them into the, the ones that are able to render and pass the occlusion test. Those will be binned into the chunks and will probably support up to a maximum. Uh, have you got a similar problem again? Hmm. Yeah, maybe you have a similar problem again, but maybe you have a maximum number of clusters per chunk or something. Um, mm. Or you could just make every 
Yeah, so the, the idea I was thinking about doing is maybe ignore that whole chunk thing. It, instead, every tile could just go over every single cluster that we have in that array, which is clusters to render. Right, they would be occlusion cold as well. So the ones that are behind the other clusters, which are the other recluders, if you will, um, those ones will not be in there. So there will be a small, it will be a smaller list. But then the problem is you have basically an n times m times um, I don't know. Oh, I guess where you've got. Oh, I guess x times y times number of clusters. So x, that's kind of the complexity. But you have all the threads going at it. That's what I was thinking about bit, uh, placing the clusters into bins. So you have x tiles multiplied by, damn it. X tiles multiplied by Y tiles multiplied by number of clusters that you need to render. So that will kind of be the complexity of the algorithm where they go over all of the clusters. With that algorithm, you could probably go over You can look at all the spheres, see if they Now I'm not sure if you could solve the problem that way because you might have to go over the same data twice still. You would have to go over You have to find a way to allocate it still. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time just to do an occlusion. Do an occlusion buffer and just see how good it is going to be. So I've got an idea for an occlusion buffer. Um or uh, what objects we can use as occluders. I don't want to use any information from last frame because um, I've done more thinking about it. But I think what we want to do is, so this is comprised of many clusters, right? We want to get the clusters which have, um, we want to get the clusters, the biggest clusters which are filled with spheres and sort of take those and draw and use those as occluders basically and those can help occlude the clusters behind or we'll probably limit the occluders to maybe like I don't know 32 or 64 or something or maybe 256 um, occluders per model and so there'll be a smaller number of occluders that we render beforehand onto a lower resolution buffer and we'll use that as our occlusion texture or something like that and that will help us stop that will help us not render clusters which are behind the back behind the back and also clusters that are oh do you see the biggest spheres there mm, i wonder if you do yeah help you not render the clusters that are further behind uh, and also the spheres that are further behind as well and it should reduce the amount of workload that's going into these systems. But anyway, I think I should have a think about this off stream and we'll uh, see what we get. See what we get to. So I'll think about the next streams that we should do. Uh, but let's commit that work. So what did we get done? We basically got all of the, um, 
Yeah, we got the LODs. Yeah, it's alright on it. Um, I'm gonna undo that thing though. So we did like a minus here. I wanna make sure I don't commit that because otherwise I'll forget. I'll be like, why, why? Yeah. So here we go, it renders them. It's gonna get pretty far away. To the point where it might not render them anymore. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's LOD 6 or whatever, where it's got like, tons and tons of spheres. We just gotta figure out how do we render them properly. Um, let's double check. All right, get commit dash a, get LOD, get all all LODs rendering. Um, but we have flickering due to the tiles being over allocated. Um, we will find a solution next time. There we go. So I'll push that up on the, on the repo for those who are, have access to the code. Um, and yeah. So our next be on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. GMT plus one now. And we'll probably, we might be doing an occlusion, occlusion buffer, building occlu occluder shapes. Or we're gonna try and think of a, or we're gonna implement an improved tile binning strategy. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do the tile binning strategy first, then the occlusion. But yeah, I've got to think about that off stream a bit. But either way, good progress. Um, so let's find someone to raid. Guess we'll read a Jai guy. Good night, gentlemen. So thank you for coming. I hope you have a good evening and yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Thank you for coming, everyone. Um, have a good tomorrow. See you Thursday if you're still if you're here. And uh, yeah, much love. All right.